Imagine driving a car powered not by petrol nor by batteries, but solely by a bottle of water. Claims of water-powered vehicles have long circulated, yet none have ever reached the commercial market, many disappearing without a trace. What lies behind this mystery? The promising news is that global automotive titan Toyota has announced plans to launch a water-powered car. Toyota's latest innovation marks a quiet yet profound revolution, one that not only pushes technological boundaries, but also poses a direct challenge to the entrenched oil-based global order. Let us explore the origins of water-powered vehicle technology and the fate of its early pioneers. Will Toyota break through, or will powerful interests once again suppress this bold advancement? In the modern era, after fuel-powered cars, the most commonly seen vehicles worldwide are battery-powered electric vehicles. In many countries, compressed natural gas CNG, is also quite popular as a fuel option, mainly because it's relatively cheap. At one point, we also heard about hydrogen-powered cars. However, all of these alternatives still raise various questions when it comes to safety. First, let's talk about hydrogen. Hydrogen is an extremely light and highly flammable gas that can cause explosions when mixed with air at concentrations between 4 to 75 percent. The temperature of such an explosion can reach up to 2300 degrees Celsius, making the fire several times more intense. Do you get the picture? Having a hydrogen cylinder in your car is like driving around with a miniature nuclear bomb, just waiting to go off. Now let's turn to compressed natural gas CNG, which is primarily composed of methane. Thanks to its cost-effectiveness, it has gained significant popularity in many countries. Its flammability range in air is approximately 5 to 15 percent, which is somewhat lower than that of hydrogen. However, that doesn't make it entirely safe. In fact, incidents involving the explosion of CNG or LPG tanks are alarmingly frequent. A quick search online will reveal numerous such tragic events. Thirdly, let's talk about electric vehicle or EV batteries. Many of us assume that battery-powered vehicles are environment-friendly, but that's not entirely true. Most EVs use lithium-ion batteries, which, while powerful, carry risks of overheating or short-circuiting, potentially leading to fires. Though these incidents aren't typically explosions, when a battery ignites, it can produce intense flames and toxic smoke that are extremely difficult to control. What's more concerning is that most lithium batteries are not recycled after use. This makes them highly damaging to the environment, in some cases even more so than traditional fuel-powered vehicles. So, from a safety perspective, hydrogen poses the highest risk of explosion. CNG falls somewhere in the middle, and while batteries have a lower risk of catching fire, they pose a serious long-term threat to the environment. So, what's the solution? The answer may lie with global automotive giant Toyota. In 2025, Toyota introduced a groundbreaking technology, one that goes beyond traditional fuel cells. This innovative engine generates hydrogen by breaking down water internally and then uses that hydrogen to power the vehicle. The result? Zero carbon dioxide emissions, no radioactive battery waste, just pure water vapor. You might be thinking, isn't this still a hydrogen-powered car? Doesn't that mean the explosion risk remains? Actually, no, and you're about to find out why. Imagine this. With just a single bottle of water, you'll never need to search for a charging station again. You can drive for miles and miles. Sounds incredible, doesn't it? Toyota claims this technology is completely safe. Remember the explosion risk we talked about? In this case, it's virtually non-existent. Why? Because the system generates hydrogen on demand directly from water. There's no need for a hydrogen tank. With no storage involved, the risk of explosion is eliminated. Moreover, the entire process operates at low pressure and controlled temperatures, significantly reducing the chances of fire or leakage. In short, it's a breakthrough that's not only efficient, but also entirely safe and explosion-free. 
Behind this technology lies a process called electrolysis, where water is split into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen then flows into a fuel cell, generating electricity to power the car's engine. In other words, you're carrying your energy source with you, simply in the form of water. However, the history of water-powered cars is not new. One mysterious figure in this story is Stanley Meyer. He was an inventor from Ohio, USA, who in the 1980s claimed to have developed a technology that could run a car solely on water. His invention, called the water fuel cell, supposedly converted ordinary water into hydrogen to power vehicles. He famously stated, you can drive across the United States on 22 gallons of water. Yet, shortly after this revolutionary invention, intense pressure, lawsuits, and outright denial began to emerge. In 1998, one evening at a dinner party, Stanley Meyer suddenly passed away. His brother, Stephen Meyer, revealed in an interview, Stanley ran out of the restaurant, clutching his neck, and his last words were, they poisoned me. Shortly afterward, his lab, all his research, and even his car were seized. Some believe he was silenced and that his death was staged. To this day, no government or private organization has revived or replicated his technology. Next comes the name Genipax, a startup company based in Osaka, Japan. In June 2008, they claimed to have developed a car that runs solely on water, requiring no electricity or fuel. Their technology was called the Water Energy System, or WES. This technology involves an energy generator installed in the car that analyzes water to produce hydrogen. The hydrogen is then converted into electricity through a fuel cell, which powers the car's engine. Genipax claimed the car can run for about an hour on just one liter of ordinary water. On June 12, 2008, at a press conference in Osaka, the car was demonstrated in front of journalists. Tokyo TV and international media quickly viralized it under the headline, Water Powered Car. However, shortly afterward, intense debate and controversy arose among scientists who raised the following questions. Producing hydrogen from water requires electricity. Therefore, calling it a water-powered car is misleading because you are supplying energy in one form or another beforehand. In response, Genipax stated, Our technology produces more hydrogen using less energy, but they did not provide detailed explanations. By mid-2009, Genipax shut down their website. The company announced that due to lack of financial support and major investments, they were unable to continue developing the technology. At the time, many speculated. This technology might have posed a threat to the oil industry, so it was pressured into silence. Now, let's take a completely different angle and explore whether water can truly be regarded as a source of energy. The Holy Scriptures describe water not just as the source of life, but also as a form of creative power. For example, in the Holy Quran, Allah Almighty says, I created every living thing from water. The Holy Quran clearly shows how powerful water is in our lives. Life itself was created from water. The Bible also says, He brought forth water from the rock. This refers to an event during the time of Moses. When the Israelites were wandering in the desert, desperate for water, God instructed Moses to strike a rock. When he did, water flowed out. Here, water is not just a life-giving element, but a symbol of God's power, mercy, and divine intervention. The water came from a hard and unexpected source, a rock, this means the source of life's energy can come from places beyond human imagination, where water represents both sustenance and a miraculous manifestation of divine strength. The Hindu scripture Rig Veda states, Water is the source and sustaining force of all life. The verse describes water as the origin, power, and sustainer of life, signifying that all existence, creation, and energy on earth fundamentally depend on water. 
In religious terms, one could say, water is not only life-giving, but also a substance capable of activating inert matter or even causing destruction. Water descends from the sky as a form of energy. Now, let's see what science says about water. Can it really work as a fuel? The chemical formula of water is H2O. Each water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Hydrogen is the true source of energy here. However, to extract the hydrogen from water, electricity is required. This process is called electrolysis. When electricity is used to split water and release hydrogen, that hydrogen can then be used as fuel to power cars or even generate electricity. So, to put it simply, cars don't run directly on water, but water can be used to produce fuel through technology. And that's the scientific reality. If Toyota's innovation becomes a reality, it could revolutionize global transportation, reshape energy politics, and even become a catalyst for ending conflicts fueled by resource struggles. The question is, is the world ready to embrace water as a source of energy? Or will this groundbreaking technology from the global giant Toyota be suppressed and locked away in some secret drawer, just like before? What do you think? Will water-powered cars change the entire geopolitical landscape of the world? Or will this possibility, like Stanley Myers or Gina Pax's, be lost forever? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If this video has opened a new perspective for you, please like, share, and subscribe to Cosmisoul and Cosmisoul Bangla. Here, we uncover the hidden truths behind science and the faith behind those truths.